Welcome back to the Bitter Betty Podcast. I'm Bitter Betty Deadhead here with my two cohorts. Bitter Betty Tova. And Bitter Betty Carol, and that's with an E. And we're back with some more Tom. Uh, every Friday's Tom Day, so we are going to go down. Tom Friday! Down, take y'all down the rabbit hole of our of our buddy Tom. Uh, yeah. Yes, it, it's, our, it's our Bitter Betty Hog Cast podcast, podcast. on Fridays. <laughs> Yes. We're going to go down the Tom rabbit hole and kind of review all of the songs starting from the beginning. So, um, if you're new here, I'm well, going to link it somewhere up yeah. there, somewhere. Tom's <laughs> our internet. Tom's our internet bestie. Yeah. So, so somewhere, somewhere up there, we'll, we'll, we'll link it for you. Um, we started out with um, Hangman. Hangman. Uh, Hangman. Yes. And mm-hmm. if you guys haven't checked that out, go check it out. We are, we did a quick review on that one already too. Um, mm-hmm. and, and Tova had some great insight on that one. So, uh, I would definitely, you know, go, go check that one out as well. Eventually we'll make yeah. a Tom Don playlist. So uh, that yeah, way yeah. if you guys are just new to Tom and you found us, you know, um, we'll be happy if you have a question, you know, we might know it, leave it, leave it down in the comments. There's we'll already uh, a Tom playlist. Just go to uh, okay. play the playlist and you'll find him. Uh, oh, we, perfect. We, perfect. Yeah. We have a few things in there that we've done a Tom and Nova. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, we've all heard this, but this is just to bring y'all down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Well, and so to to start, like, Hangman uh, that we did was kind of like the turning point in Tom's musical career. And this was a song he put out, uh, was like five or six months later, uh, between March, March, April, May, June, July, August, five months later. This was the song that put him on the map. This is the first viral song he had. uh, And... There's a, a great story to go along with yes. that, but we're going to let Tom tell it and we will, uh, we'll link you'll, that. you'll see that. Or yeah. not link it, but we're going to play a little clip of it here in a, in a little bit. Just keep watching. Yeah. Yep. Getting a record deal with Island Def Jam. They moved her to LA. This is many years have passed. Then I have my mental breakdown. I sober up and get myself better. And Nova says, hey, come to LA and live with me. So I come down to LA and I'm staying with Nova in Crenshaw. Um, which is like the hood. It's a, yeah, this is yeah, a, tough, a tough part of town. And we're living there together. Not where I lived. I lived I lived on Crenshaw. Yeah, but you were in the west side of Crenshaw. Was, yeah, it was beautiful. Oh, you're yeah, you're 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 at the other side. Yeah. 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 So so Nova and I are living in Crenshaw together and it's like pretty grim. We're like living in like an essentially like almost a, a like a crack shack. And it's just like the walls are full of mice. And I, I'd go to the kitchen in the middle of the night and open the cupboards and this cockroaches running across all our plates uh-huh. and stuff and the, the roof's leaking. And we can't afford to do like groceries and pay rent in the same month. Like our power was cut off so often that I had an extension cord that I used to keep coiled up behind the fridge. And when the power got cut off, I'd run the cord out into my neighbor's garage and, and plug it into his garage so our food in the fridge didn't spoil. Like, it was fucking grim. And, Did he uh, know about it? Pardon me? Yeah, he knew about it. He was cool. He was cool. Um, and then it was, like, so fucking bizarre. It was, like, literally, like, one day, you know. The- it's beyond mice and men. <laughs> For real, literally. So it was bizarre. Like one day we're, we're sitting there and the power had just come back on after a week of being cut off and, and, and we have no food and no money for rent. We literally have nothing. Oh, and I, I have half a cigarette left. This is like, Oh no. Blows my mind to this day. And, and I'm like, I love- I'm sitting in this house and this, I think it was like a Drake song or a G easy song comes on the computer or the radio or whatever. And whoever it was, was sort of like, bitching about being famous and bitching about being rich and it's like kind of like the woe is me like sad celebrity song and i was yeah. like i was so bitter about it i was like how fucking dare you like yeah. i would give anything to be in that position um and not in the position that i'm in now um i was so fucking offended by it and i went out and sat on the front porch um with half a cigarette and in the time that it took me to smoke that cigarette but it was literally like I there's nothing no other way to explain it. It was literally like God like reached down and like spoke through me into my phone. And I wrote this song in like 10 minutes. I don't remember stopping. Really? Yeah. I don't remember stopping to think 
oh, what word rhymes here? Or like, what should I say at this part? Or like anything, like a typical songwriting. Was part. it just like a download hit you and you had to download it? Just like that. Yeah. And and by the time I'd finished smoking the cigarette, I had written this song and my hands were shaking on my phone. I almost had a panic attack. I ran into the house and I said, no, but I just wrote the song. It's going to change our fucking life. Um, you I, knew it right away? Knew, well, because it came through you, right? Yeah, I, I have you think a, it came... You feel like it came straight from God through you to your fingers. That's the only explanation I can come up with. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, that, that's what I thought. You know, th- there has been, there's been a lot of times in my life, especially growing up that I wasn't sure if there was anything that existed beyond us. Um, and that was one of those experiences where it was just like, oh, I'm actually a very small part of what's going on here. There's something much mm-hmm. more powerful than me here. Um, it was just one of those things. And I, how long was that from when you were so depressed and you took that one good pill? How, how long was that? Six months. Wow. Yeah. So I ran and you moved to Canada to U S in that time. Yeah. Yeah. And your power shut off. Got rats. Yeah. You write this song. What happens next? I run it. I run in the house. I'm freaking out. And I say to Nova, Hey, I just, I just wrote the song. It's going to change everything. Uh, can you set up your camera? Can we shoot this video? And she's like, you don't even have the song recorded. And I said, look, I'm going to record it right now. While I'm recording, can you pull the backdrop down and set up a light? And she does. And I record this thing. We had this one $25 light from Amazon. It was about this big. That's all we had for our light. And she pulls the backdrop down, sets up the light. We shoot this video in like an hour. I call my sister. This is brutal. This is embarrassing. My sister's five years younger than me. Um, I called my sister and asked her for two hundred dollars because we had nothing. Oh no! And, and she, oh, she, my no. sister gives me two hundred bucks. I call my mom, ask her for two hundred bucks. She gives me two hundred. I called three of my friends and asked them for one hundred and fifty bucks a piece. And when it was all said and done, I had eleven hundred dollars, and uh, that was enough to pay our rent and do groceries. Neither of which we could do without this eleven hundred dollars. Um, but I was like, "Fuck it, we got to bet it all on red right now." And uh, the next day we put the music video out and I took that $1,100 and put it on an ad. And uh, 24 hours later, it had a million views and just changed our life. Man. It's amazing. Now, now. Congrats. Thank you. What, what do you think people were, what were you, were you saying that was so magnetic to people at that time? I was pretty much just criticizing the, status quo of hip hop. Like, like I said, I had heard that song and it just, it irritated me so much that this guy was bitching about a lifestyle that like was the opposite of mine and one that I would give anything to have. Um, I was so resentful about it. So I wrote this song called Dear Rappers and that was in 2017. And the whole thing was just criticizing the message of hip hop. Um, and you know, a lot of people ended up saying that, calling me a racist for that song. And my response was Mm -hmm. that, I wasn't criticizing any rappers of a particular color. I was criticizing rappers of a particular content. Um, And that was, you know, drugs, cars, clothes, money, girls, partying, all the same stuff that deteriorated me to a point where I had a fucking mental breakdown. Um, Mm -hmm. So that mental breakdown was the greatest thing that ever happened because coming out of it, I was like, you know what? Do I want to make the same music that eroded my morals and it fucked my life up yeah do i want to be making that for other kids so they can end up in the same fucked up situation i'm in obviously not so i wanted to make music that would was going to inform people wake people up empower people and and improve and and enforce high moral value uh the opposite of sort of the music that i was listening to so that's what dear rappers was and i think that in a world that's just like so fake and so full of bullshit it's really easy to just cut through all that noise just by being fucking authentic and genuine and true to yourself. And I was saying a lot of things that a lot of people were thinking, but weren't saying out loud. So I think I got to speak on behalf of a lot of people sort of by accident. It was a very personal journey for me. And I didn't know that there was millions of people that felt the same way. Um, what was that a shock to you when you found that out? I couldn't fucking believe it. I didn't know what was going on. Like we woke up the next day and I was, looked at YouTube and I, or Facebook or whatever it was. And I said, no, but the video has got a million views. And, and my fan page went from having 500 people on it to 20,000 people overnight and fucking, you know, 
30 days later, a check comes in the mail for $10,000. Neither one of us had ever seen that amount of money before. And then, mm -hmm. you know, then the next month it was 20 and then 50 and then 70 and then a hundred. And I was like, we're moving the fuck out of Crenshaw. Let's go. Um, yeah, it was just a really wild ride. And like, I'm almost crying just talking about it now. Cause it was just, I just thank God every day. Cause I, we were on the brink. Like, I don't know where we'd be right now if it wasn't for that song. Probably still in Crenshaw, fucked up. So, ladies and gentlemen, the song that changed Tom McDonald's life, Dear Rappers. Dear Rappers. Man, it's easy for these rappers who have it all Talk about the days when they used to be sad I guess I can't relate to being famous and wealthy I'm 28 and still praying for the day I have a chance Maybe y'all can help me out though I'm just trying to take care of my household I don't even want to make my mouth go I just want to win before the system that I'm in Gets a hold of me again and starts to squeeze under my chin until I'm out cold Dear rappers, can you help me? I'll even take a selfie with your album that I bought I got every single CD that you ever fucking dropped I spent everything I had and I never had a lot Oh my god, what a mess Your words help me deal with the stress to contemplate my suicide the nights I was depressed Used to pop you in a boombox and sit up on my desk Listen to your music till I felt it in my chest But these days it's like you don't have nothing left Your music feels kinda like you're trying to write a check Everything is digital, I mean no disrespect But I'm paying even more and you give me even less What the fuck? You taught me to think, you taught me to grow You taught me the things to survive on my own But now you teach me to drink, you teach me to smoke You teach me to think, every woman's a hoe I don't want your Xanax bars Or your fancy foreign cars Though your mind Money in my face and try to tell me that it's art No, 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 no No, 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 no Yeah, just a drug addict on TV I can't hear Pause another it. fucking song about abusing medication Pause it, yeah Yeah I heard, I heard, I heard uh, <laughs> Alright, sorry I couldn't, it's, loud, it's really loud in my headphones <laughs> Sometimes I can't hear myself Uh, you know, I love, uh there in the in the inter in the part of the interview we're gonna show telling the story about this song one thing i didn't know that i learned in that interview actually was like what really kind of triggered it was mm -hmm. him you know he a song came on and this rapper was talking about like being right. sad about how hard it was to be famous and he was it like pissed him off because here he was struggling to survive struggling to decide to keep the lights on or put food on the table or be able to that pay food, rent. Yeah. And here's this famous rich person like that he would die to be, yeah. you know, living bitching that lifestyle. About, and yeah, yeah. he's bitching about how, uh, how it's a struggle to be rich or something like that. And Tom's yeah. like, infuriated. Like, yeah. And, you know, especially like, because in, you know, just a year prior to this, he was going through a mental breakdown, uh, you know, dealing with recovery from alcohol and drug addiction. And he had really just started pulling himself back out of that hole and to hear that i can only imagine what it was but it whatever it was uh actually, tr like triggered the genius that became this song and in that interview he's actually talking about how he pulled the screen down told nova we're gonna shoot this and they shot right him so fast. now yeah yeah and, and look because it's all black he just had a black yeah. screen behind him and like he's over here and, a, and one thing. light they had one, one light, light one life and this and this was the product of that and he borrowed money from his sister and his mom and his friends and mm -hmm. put it all on ads for this and just in a hail mary hoping that this was going to be the one and it sure was they woke up and they had a million and, and, that was and now it. and now his mom's retired he bought his dad a porsche yeah. i mean like <laughs> yeah it's it's amazing uh congratulations absolutely tom. amazing absolutely congratulations tom i'm i'm proud of it i'm proud of the way i'm so proud of tom like, my God, like I, I feel like he's my brother I because, like, I, I, I feel so much emotion when it, when I think about all the success and everything he's been through. Like, yeah, uh, watch. We are him. definitely. Just a... <laughs> oh, go ahead. I was gonna say we're definitely proud big sisters yes. of Tom McDonald. That Absolutely. Is well, it's just it, it goes beyond even the music when you get to know him and the type of person he is. He's truly inspired me to be a better person, yeah. like to do better, be better, and act better, and... work harder work harder not complain like yeah tom is is i mean honestly tom is my hero i mean that that sounds really cheesy but like he really is my fucking hero i get you i, I want to be like you. tom when i grow up me too i'm gonna be nova i want to be tom when i grow up my daughter wants to be nova when she grows up <laughs> but, yeah all right 
that I had to take just to stay alive There's more important shit than what you wear and where you live And who you fuck and what you drink and what you spend and what you drive Rappers full of bullshit Rappers just a marketing vehicle for the product that the man wants you to buy Rap about a full clip Rappers just promoting different liquors and varieties of ways that you could die Yeah Hold on Dear Pause. rappers, Pause can you it. help okay. me? Pause it. Mm -hmm. Go back What is that that he has in his hands? I never I can quite make it out A shotgun Yeah, I thought is it was Is it a good. shotgun? Yeah, I think he's cocking it song about like, abusing medication that I had to take to stay yeah. alive. There's more important yeah. shit than what you wear and where you live in. That's pills. Oh, yeah. Are you, is that what you're talking about? No, I, I see. I have always had trouble making out what's in the video because it's so dark. Yeah. Yeah. Play, play, play a little bit further. What you drink yeah, and what you spend and what you drive. Yeah. Rappers full of bullshit. Rappers just a marketing vehicle for the product that the man wants you to buy. Rap about a full clip. Rappers just promoting That's different gun, liquors yeah. and varieties of ways that you can get together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Dear rappers, can you help me? Are you almost out of alcohol to sell me? Tell me, cause drinking every night can be the way to getting wealthy. If I'm really being honest, all the shit is overwhelming. I need someone to look up to. You're living in a country that elected Donald Trump. You're living in a country where police are killing people every day, and all you want to talk about is doing drugs. You've been blinded by the money, you've been blinded by the cars, you've been blinded by the women. Don't know who the fuck you are. Thought I knew you when I spent a hundred dollars on a ticket to your show, and now I feel like you stole my fucking money and I'm broke. Man, you taught us how to rap, and you taught us how to dress, and you taught us how to act if we wanted to impress. Now you're teaching me to live like I know you never would. What you're preaching to these kids is keeping them inside the hood. Your Xanax bars, all your fancy foreign cars. Throw your money in my face and try to tell me that it's dark No, 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 no No, 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 no. Just a drug addict, don't I don't want your Xanax bars Or your fancy foreign cars Throw your money in my face and try to tell me that it's dark No, 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 no No, no, no Drug addict on TV yeah. mm. Such you a know, great song It is and you know to clarify to anybody who may not understand what this song is really about it's, it's going after the content of the mainstream rap music industry or the hip-hop culture uh, at, You know at that point in time and continues still to be you know when you know, they're promoting violence and drugs and, you know, treating women like hoes and just, you know, violence and just all out like amoral stuff. Like just, but there's, there's, that doesn't mean all rappers. It just means yeah, rappers right. of a particular was, content, that yes. content. If you're not doing that content, he's not talking about you yes. or, or them. I was, that's, that's I was getting ready to interject yes. that same thing. We're not saying, or, yeah. and we're not talking about, no all hip-hop or all no. rap we're talking about a specific because, yeah, content you do go you know, back, being shoved in, if, in our children's faces every day because if you that go, is what we're talking about because if you go and watch one of the interviews i'm not going to talk about the, i'm not going to i am not going to link the interview i'm not but if you know you know um mm -hmm. y'all know but the one interview where there was a somebody from the music industry was on there after tom had done his interview part Oh, and recently, he, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he was, like, going off on how... I'll say it. <laughs> no, it's not that I, oh, I know. won't say it. It's just that this is not about that particularly. But right. It, like, but going, feeding off of what Tova just said, you know? Or, no, Carol just said about... Yeah, we all both just said. <laughs> my, yeah. my brain's everywhere. But, uh, anyways, ADHD, my brain just went, like, literally yep. just flew everywhere. Uh <laughs> But the that happens to me all the time. The that that guy from the thing, he was like, "Well, we don't make music like, yeah, you did, yeah, you did." And the thing yeah. is, is it might not be directly toward you personally, but uh, yeah, the, there's people you've worked with that has, you know what I mean? Well, and you can't tell me that a message like this, where it's talking about don't like you shouldn't be doing drugs, you shouldn't promoting this stuff. That this is controversial and not okay, but WAP is just fine. Right. Correct. And that's exactly what I was just getting ready to. Somebody's panties were in a bunch. And mm -hmm. if the shoe fits, buddy, and you feel like he's talking about you, Check then yourself, maybe right? you need to reevaluate what you're doing. Right? Because yeah. not one time in any song has Tom targeted specifically 
no, the no rap knows. culture and say that all rap music right. is, is this because we well, know it's it, clearly not. Yeah. And it was specifically about, you know, like it goes back to his own experience and the, the fact that people can just negate his entire experience uh, is beyond me. And and that same person brought up something about blaming his drug addiction on the culture. And that's not what it was at all. Tom wanted to be a rapper and he was idolizing these rappers as a lot of people do. And he was emulating. He started emulating the lifestyles they were living because that's what that's the lifestyle that's who he wanted to be and that's what they were doing and so it led him down that path yes he made those choices himself but, but he, he never, also made the choice to stop Tom only never after bl- he ne- found, Tom's but. never blamed his um, no. his drug abuse his alcohol abuse he's never blamed the industry on that he's taken full responsibility of that on his own yes and and here's my thing and here's where I want to interject as that as that goes anyways so if we're shown stuff enough, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. If yeah. we watch things enough, even though we are our own person, yeah. if you see something and you aspire to be something, then you do those things that are being shown to you to aspire to be whatever you're trying to be. So right. of course you're going to, I, I mean, I always, I hate that. Like I've, Right. I, I've been fat most of my life. Right. I've been the one that's chose to put those those different foods in my mouth. But at the same time, I was never taught differently. Right. I was never told no. I was never <laughs> told different things. So at that point right. in time, you still, I mean, you have self accountability. But at the same time, you know, I had to learn that I can't do those things because I wasn't taught those things. I would only ever saw you know, my, my mom and dad, and I was never told no. And my whole family was fat and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So I had to decide at some point that I wanted to be different. Right. Mm -hmm. And so those are choices that I ultimately made. However, you know, there are still always underlying factors that attribute to certain things. So, you know, I just, I disagree. I know what interview you're talking about and I did very, I disagree. And I would love to have a conversation with the man myself. But right. that's, I know that, that that's yeah. that big sister thing again, right? Where I want to be yeah. like, listen here, buddy. Well, it's, it's, you know, people like that. Me. People like that just end up manipulating uh, things that people say to fit their narrative. Exactly. And right, or gaslight. Yeah, that's what he did. You know, and uh, just to reiterate, like he wasn't. He's never talked about all rappers. He's never been an all or nothing type of person. He's mm-hmm. literally just attacking or addressing the content that yes. is being pushed that is ruining kids lives and that's fact you can look it up the statistics are there and yes. this was back in 2017 tom's, you know and tom's and it's still favorite, true to tom's favorite rapper is eminem everybody knows that like if you yeah really and he grew tom, up with tupac and he grew up with tupac but he listens to more metal music so i mean tom's like it, everywhere like he's so like yeah he, he likes all kinds of stuff i mean he's done right. he's done country music with John Wright, uh, Wright John, John Rich. Rich. John, John Rich. Rich. Yeah. See, I'm not a country yeah. fan. I don't know all those. Yeah. <laughs> From Big and Rich. <laughs> From Big and Rich. Right. And Same actually, horse, ride right a cowboy. They're actually thinking about doing another song together. So, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, and it may be coming out early this year, yeah. maybe, if they do that song. I don't know. Tom doesn't tell us anything like that. He, he, no. He, I he plays think. with us. <laughs> no. It, I mean, John Rich may have posted something about it on a social media platform. Well, Dax posted something uh, to tease us too, and that never happened, yet, or it hasn't yet. No it, ha- no, it hasn't yet. He posted four, and he just told people to guess which one it was going to be. So I definitely anticipate another collab, especially because Dax collabed with Tom and Adam on The Brave 2 last year. Mm-hmm. So I definitely see those collabs coming uh, this year. But I also, I have I have a feeling, I have my and magic eight ball is starting to vibrate again, guys. Like something is coming. <laughs> something sure wicked this way comes. You sure that's an eight ball, Tova? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely an eight ball and it's definitely vibrating. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I know I, my I don't instincts, need to know about my spidey eight balls. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, you dirty minded Bettys. Good God. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say now. Well, you can't say balls in vibration in the same sentence. <laughs> 
Uh, my spidey senses are tingling. I am anticipating <laughs> a <laughs> announcement. <laughs> Is that what you call uh, it? <laughs> <laughs> These ladies have dirty minds. If you are a superhero fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I have a feeling these ladies don't know nothing about the spider man Oh, I do. But <laughs> I just We do. <laughs> but she's got vibrating yeah. eight balls and tingling, so I'm just saying. No, my spidey senses. <laughs> my intuition rumbles. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh god. Okay. Yeah. I have anticipate <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I anticipate. I anticipate. I'm calling it right now. I anticipate within 3 weeks a new announcement. Oh, I'm I'm kind of something's thinking, coming. I kind of think we might get something coming this week, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, my yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> it could be as early as is tomorrow an announcement. It's always going to be on a Monday. It could be tomorrow. My Maybe spidey senses don't tingle like that, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, because uh, when when Tom goes uh, goes quiet, he's been quiet. That's when I know he's, he's been quiet. He's been working hard. Yeah, he's, he's been working. he's been pretty quiet. So that's when I know. Yeah, because he he went quiet for like three months, <clears throat> and he came back with dirty. No, was it dirty money? No, it's after dirty money. He went quiet for like three it was. Months. Right, the it was, I was after, right after. Yeah, him well, and I think Adam, was, Adam were working yeah. on Brave too, and, and then he lied. Well, he didn't lie, but he was, and, play, he was playing with us. Yeah, him well, and Adam. Ghost, ghost, ghost. After ghost, anything happened with the radio and stuff. He disappeared at the beginning of the year for for. It didn't come out with anything for three months. Yeah. When they kicked him off the radio because of his controversiality. And that song had nothing to do with none of that. So that's another thing I don't understand. Like why? Why? Well, like, it's just. One more reason that the music industry fucking sucks. Sucks. It sucks. I'm still <laughs> mad about that. I don't think I'll ever not be mad about that. No. Same. Same. Nope. That's why I stick with. I usually stick with independent artists, but the, we, we yeah. have some things that are not so. Well, it's just. It, I mean, at first it's like independent, but then it's also like the content of the 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 artists themselves. You know what I mean? Like yeah. in the who who those people are like when they're more interesting and when i feel like they're more relatable is when i i tend to like gravitate towards them but i think the only i mean besides dax really the only signed artist is would be like jelly roll and uh Polly in reverse i love jelly i love ronnie jelly <laughs> i love i do love me some ronnie i have a little yeah. bit of a crush on ronnie i'm not gonna lie uh, that dude's funny you. as hell I feel you. god if, if i could get him on tom on a track and ren and Ryan. But, but for sure like Tom and Ronnie because they both share the love of like rap and, and rock and metal and stuff and it'd be like I don't know no response watch the world I born, like burn Ren, don't look I feel down like to you know, has a little rock I mean, he, him and, him oh, and yeah. Big Push did some rock yeah. music you know so like, yeah. well if it was them three I would want just like just a just a rap no no hooks or anything just like straight bars and I kind of want so some cool. heavy in it too. I think with Ronnie's growl, his metal growl, yeah. his scream that he has. It's well, so maybe funny. maybe Ronnie does the hook with his la his bigness. <laughs> <laughs> he has a big voice. <laughs> I'm not touching that one. <laughs> Not touching it. Nope. Nope. Hey, on that note, I think we're going to wrap it up because, wow. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no pun intended. No pun intended.